A newsletter subscriber recently asked me how they could add a border like this to their photos using Affinity Photo. In this video, I'll explain how you can do the same. I'm starting with the edited image open in Affinity Photo. I'm also using a copy of the image rather than the original file because I need to make a few changes. These are to ensure that the image is suitable for displaying on the internet. The first is to flatten the image because it has multiple layers that can increase the size. To do this, select the top layer by clicking it in the Layers Studio panel. Now whilst holding down your Shift key, click the bottom layer to select all the layers in the image. Then in the Layers menu, choose the Merge Selected option to flatten the layers into a single pixel layer. The next step is to convert the image colour space to be sRGB. I've been doing my editing in the Pro Photo RGB colour space. Converting it to sRGB means that I control the colour shifts that will occur when displayed on most devices. To convert the image, select the Document menu and then Convert Format ICC Profile. In the dialog, I can select the new colour profile to use, which is sRGB. I can then choose the rendering intent in this drop-down, which controls the out-of-gamut colours and how they're converted. For this image, I already know that I want to use the perceptual rendering intent. Now that the image is converted to the new colour space, I'm going to reduce its size. If I select the document menu, I can choose the resize document option. Currently, it's over 10,000 pixels on the long edge, so I'll reduce it to about 3,000. When I enter this, Affinity Photo resizes the other edge of the image to maintain the aspect ratio. That's because of this link icon between the two fields. I can click this to toggle it off and on, allowing me to retain or change the image aspect ratio. I'm happy with the bilinear option for reducing the image size, so I'll click the OK button. Now I can begin to create the document layout to produce a white border with a black key line around the image. To create the white edge, I'm going to expand the document canvas around the image. In Affinity Photo, images sit on a canvas. We don't usually see this because it's the same size as the image. To resize only the canvas, I can select the document menu and then the resize canvas option. The dialog shows the current dimensions of the canvas. What I want to do is expand the canvas around the image by 50 pixels on each edge. When you do this, it's important to select the correct anchor point using the 3x3 grid. By selecting the center point, I'm telling Affinity Photo to change the canvas size relative to this. So, if I increase the width of the canvas by 100 pixels, there will be 50 pixels added to each side. But before I change the width, I first want to click the link icon between the two fields. If I didn't, when I change the width, it would change the height in proportion to maintain the aspect ratio. And because the two edges of the canvas aren't the same size, it won't add 50 pixels to every edge. Now I can change 3000 pixels to be 3100 and change 2250 to be 2350. I can then resize the canvas. Now we can see the edge of the canvas around the edge of the image. The checkered pattern that you see means that this area is transparent. It's controlled by the transparent background setting in the document menu. You can select this to toggle between transparent and white. My next step is to add the new layer to the document by selecting the document menu and then the fill layer option. The reason I'm using a fill layer is because I can continue to change its colour at any time in the future. I just need to click the colour swatch in the toolbar when the layer is selected in the Layer Studio panel. Then I can use the colour wheel to choose the colour that I want, although for this image I am going to use white. The next step is to position the image layer so that it's on top of the fill layer. This produces a nice white border around the image. Now let's add a second layer, but this time I'm going to use a regular layer. I'll add it by clicking the icon with the checkered pattern at the bottom of the Layer Studio panel. Now check that the fill layer is on the bottom and the new layer is above it. We also want the image layer to be on the very top. In a moment, I'll add a key line or stroke around the new layer. But first we need to fill the layer with the colour that we want to use for the border. We need to do this because the layer is empty, so the key line or outline won't be visible. To fill the layer, I'll use the Flood Fill tool set to white. I can then click on the exposed edge of the layer to fill it with white. To add the outline to the layer, first select it in the Layers Studio panel. I can then click the FX icon at the bottom of the panel. 
This opens the Layer Effects dialog where I can choose the Outline option. The colour of the outline is already set to black, so I'll leave that. I'll then set the width of the line to be 2 pixels, and I'll change its opacity to 50%. The nice thing about using a layer effect like this is that it's non destructive and we can change it later. With that done, I'm now going to add a further 100 pixels around the edge of the document. As before, I'll use the Resize Canvas option in the Document menu. I'll then break the link between the two fields so that I can resize them independently. Now I can change the canvas width from 3100 pixels to 3300. And I'll change the height from 2350 to 2550. I'll leave the anchor point in the center so that the size increase is added evenly to the edges of the canvas. I can then click resize to make the change. Next, I want to add a further 150 pixels to the bottom of the document to produce a wider border. Again, I'll choose the Resize Canvas option in the Document menu. I can then break the link between the two fields and add 150 pixels to the height. This time, I'll change the anchor point to be at the top center so that the pixels are added to the bottom of the canvas. You can see this when I click the Resize button. As a final step, let's add some text to the bottom of the page. For this, I'll use the Artistic Text tool. When I have the tool selected, I can click and drag on the point where I want to add the text. Let's enter the text Derwent Valley, which is where I shot the image. Once I've entered this, I'll select the Move tool. I can then use this to click and drag the text into position. I can also change the font and font size in the toolbar. The image is now ready for export using the File menu. In the Export dialog, I'll choose the PDF option. I'll also set it to use JPEG compression to reduce the file size. And there you have the finished layout, saved as a PDF document. You can also save this as an Affinity Photo template to use it as a layout for other images. Now earlier, I converted the image to use the sRGB color space using the perceptual rendering intent. If you want to understand what the different rendering intents do, watch this video about soft proofing in Affinity Photo. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon for another video.